The city of Lake Orion issues licenses to fish in its two lakes. The daily fish catch at lakes 1 and 2 respectively are given as follows. Lake 1, Q1 equals 16 L1 minus 0.4 L1 squared. And Lake 2, Q2 equals 10 L2 minus 0.1 L2 squared. Q is the fish catch and L is the number of fishermen at a given lake. Determine the maximum daily fish catch at the two lakes. We can sketch the production functions Q against L, and we can see that we have quadratic functions, and uh, the minus term shows us that we are increasing at a decreasing rate, and eventually we are going to max out the production functions. If we want to maximize total production, then we want to get to the top of each of these two production functions. In order to get to the top of the production functions, we want to observe the point where the slope of the production function is zero. Then we know that we have arrived at a maximum. The first derivative of each of these functions gives us the slope of the function, and when we set equal to zero, we determine the maximum for the actual function. Because this is a separable problem, we can separate Q1 or lake 1 from Q2 or lake 2. We can obtain the total fish catch by obtaining the maximum on each one of these two functions. So we take the first derivative of each of these functions. So we have dQ1 on dL1 equals 16 minus 0.8L1. When we set equal to 0, we are trying to determine where the slope of the production function is 0 or where the function achieves its maximum. 16 divided by 0.8 equals L1. 160 divided by 8 is 20. So at L1 equals 20, we obtain the maximum fish catch. We plug 20 back into the function, and we determine the maximum fish catch at lake 1. 20 squared is 400, and 40% 40 of 400 is 160. So 320 minus 160 gives us 160. So 20 fish a person will yield 160 fish at lake 1. And now to find the maximum fish catch at lake 2, we differentiate. So dq2 on dl2, when we differentiate, we get 10 minus 0.2 l2. We set equal to 0 for the maximum of the function. And 10 divided by 0.2 equals l2 or 100 divided by 2 equals 50, so 50 fisher persons at Lake 2 will give us the maximum fish catch. Plug 50 back into the production function at Lake 2, so you get 10 times 50 is 500, and 10% of 50 squared, 50 squared is 2,500, so 500 minus 250 is 250. Notice the symmetry in these functions. The total fish catch then would be 160 fish at lake 1 and 250 fish at lake 2 for a total of 410 fish. This problem has many intriguing aspects. For one thing, if we have 160 fish caught at lake 1 and 20 fisher persons, we can determine that the average fish catch will be 8 fish per fisher person. And with 250 fish, caught by 50 fisher persons at Lake 2, the average fish catch would be 5 at Lake 2. If you were a fisher person and you were fishing in Lake 2 and your average catch was 5 and your brother was fishing in Lake 1 and his average catch was 8, you would be tempted to leave Lake 2 and go to Lake 1 as long as no one prevented this from happening. And uh, obviously we expect that if the fisher persons get to keep the average fish catch as their reward, then fisher persons would leave Lake 2 and move to Lake 1, and they will do that until the average fish catch in each lake is equated. We can determine where the average fish catch will be the same in each lake by setting AP1 equals to AP2. 16 minus 0.4 L1 equals 10 minus 0.1 L2. We bring the 16 and the 10 together, we get 6. We bring the 0.4L1 over as positive, so we get 0.4L1 minus 0.1L2 equals 6. We're going to try to make one of these coefficients 1, 
So the easiest thing to do might be to multiply this equation by 10. So we would have 4L1 minus L2 equals 60. Alongside or equating of the averages, 4L1 minus L2 equals 60, we know that we have 70 Fisher persons. So we're trying to determine how the 70 Fisher persons should allocate themselves to equalize the fish catch at both lakes. So we set the constraint of 70 Fisher persons alongside the equating of the average product equations. And when we sum these two equations, the L2s get eliminated, and we get 5L1 equals 130. So L1 is equal to 130 divided by 5, which is 26. And since there are 70 Fisher persons, 70 minus 26 equals 44. So six individuals will leave Lake 2 and join Lake 1 until the average products are the same. We can verify that by plugging in for L1, 26, and plugging in 44 for L2, and we will see that the average fish catch will be the same when we do that. 0.1 of 44 is 4.4. 4.4 from 10 is 5.6. We can see that the average fish catch will be 5.6. Obviously, we can calculate the total fish catch, and 5.6 times 70 will be the total fish catch. And it should be obvious that we're going to catch fewer fish when this occurs. The total fish catch will fall to 392 from the 400 max we had and the interesting aspect of the problem is that when the fisher persons act in their own self-interest we will actually catch fewer fish. Let us observe what happens to the marginal productivity when the fisher persons relocate to equalize the average fish catch across the both lakes. Because we were at a point where the marginal products were zero then clearly adding more fisher persons to lake one would push the marginal product further down and that marginal product which was zero is now going to become negative the marginal product in lake two which was zero will become positive when the fisher persons reassign themselves here is a graph showing what happens when the fisher persons equate average productivity notice that the average productivity for lake two has its origin starting in the bottom right hand corner so the average product curve is actually negatively sloped and we are writing the average product backwards the horizontal length here represents the total number of fisher persons and we are trying to show the intersection of the two average products as the equating of the average products and since the horizontal quantity is the number of fisher persons then we know that the horizontal length is 70 and we are showing the allocation 4426 when we have the average products equated. It should be obvious that if we're equating the average products at a point such as this one, that the marginal products will be different and uh, we will see that one marginal product will be negative and the other one will be positive in this particular scenario. Apologies since the curves are not drawn to scale but you still get the sense that the marginal product in lake 1 will be negative as we move to equate the average products. In order to maximize the total fish catch, we should operate where the marginal products are equal. Again, this graph does not give us a good perspective on that, but operating where the marginal products are both zero would have maximized the total fish catch. Part of the problem is that this graph is drawn for a quantity less than 70. Let us redo the problem for a quantity of Fisher persons less than 70, and we will try to determine the optimal allocation. Once we are constrained to some quantity of Fisher persons less than the quantity that maximizes total output, we expect the total output to decline, but we also know that the rule for maximizing total output is to equate the marginal product curves. Equate MP1 with MP2. Notice that the average products will be different. If you equate average products, the marginal products will be different. And we see that in order to maximize total output, we need to operate where the marginal products are equated. Operating with fewer than 70 Fisher persons, then we have the constraint and the equating of the marginals as the two conditions that solve our problem of maximizing the total output subject to the constraint.
Here is a visual of the graphical analysis that we were speaking of, the allocation. When there are 40 fisher persons, you allocate them 14 and 26.